Hello students, this is Pathology Chapter 2, Inflammation and Repair, Lecture 1. This chapter covers injury, natural defenses against injury, inflammation, regeneration and repair, injuries to teeth, injuries to soft tissues, reactive connective tissue hyperplasia, and inflammatory periapical lesions. The body's responses to injury are inflammation, immunity, and repair. Injury is the result of an alteration in the environment that causes tissue damage or necrosis. Less severe injury can cause hyperplasia, hypertrophy, or atrophy. Inflammation is the process that allows the body to eliminate injurious agents, contain injuries, and heal defects. Natural or innate defenses against injury include physical barriers such as intact skin or mucosa, mechanical defense such as the respiratory system cilia and mucus, antibacterial activity, such as enzymes in the saliva, removal of foreign substances, such as the flushing action caused by tears, saliva, urine, and diarrhea, and the inflammation process, which includes white blood cells. Inflammation is a nonspecific response. The extent and duration of injury extend the duration of the inflammatory response. Inflammation can be local or systemic. It can be acute, chronic, or a combination of both. The classic or cardinal signs of inflammation include localized signs such as redness, heat, swelling, pain, and loss of normal tissue function. Systemic signs include fever, leukocytosis, elevated C-reactive protein, and lymphadenopathy. Leukocytosis is a temporary increase in the number of white blood cells circulating in the blood. Lymphadenopathy is abnormal enlargement of lymph nodes. C-reactive protein is a nonspecific protein produced in the liver that becomes elevated during episodes of acute inflammation or infection. The sequence of microscopic events is as follows. The first is injury to tissue followed by constriction of the microcirculation, followed by dilation of the microcirculation, causing hyperemia, erythema, and heat. Next is increase in permeability, followed by exudate, which leaves the microcirculation. This can be called transudate. An increase in blood viscosity, decreased blood flow, margination and pavementing of white blood cells. This is also known as chemotaxis. White blood cells enter the tissue and white blood cells ingest the foreign material. Please see pages 33 and 34 of your textbook to look up the vocabulary definitions for chemotaxis, edema, emigration, erythema, exudate, hyperemia, margination, microcirculation, pavementing, phagocytosis, and transudate. This image of the microscopic events and clinical signs of inflammation is found in page 36 of your textbook, figure 2-1. 
Hyperemia is an increase in blood flow that fills the capillary beds in the injured tissue. Hyperemia results in erythema or redness and heat. During hyperemia, the permeability of the blood vessels of the microcirculation also increase and the blood vessels become leaky. The fluid that escapes is called transudate. That is the same type of fluid that normally supplies oxygen and nutrients to the cells. When this fluid is lost, the blood viscosity increases. The blood becomes thicker and cannot flow as easily. As the blood flow slows down, red blood cells begin to pile up in the center of the blood vessels and the white blood cells are displaced to the periphery of the blood vessel. This movement of the white blood cells to the periphery is called margination. The lining of the walls of the blood vessels are now sticky and they become lined by white blood cells. This is called pavementing. After pavementing vessel walls, the white blood cells begin to escape. This process is called emigration. Those white blood cells are primarily neutrophils. As the blood vessels become more permeable, larger molecules and other cells are allowed to escape. This fluid is now called exudate and contains cells and a higher concentration of protein molecules than the transudate. Transudate and exudate helped to dilute injurious agents in the tissue. Serous or watery exudate mainly contains plasma fluids and proteins but few white blood cells. Purulent up exudate or suppuration contains plasma fluids, proteins, tissue debris, and many white blood cells. An abscess is a collection of purulent exudate that has accumulated in a cavity formed by the tissue. The formation of exudate may be so excessive that it interferes with repair of the tissue and the body creates a channel through which this exudate may drain. This is called a fistula or a fistulous tract. In some cases, excessive exudate in damaged tissue must be drained mechanically by making an incision in the surface of the swollen area and sometimes placing a drainage tube. The incision and drainage procedure may also be accompanied by administration of antibiotics and anti-inflammatories. In a nutshell, the sequence of microscopic events in inflammation are transudate followed by exudate which causes edema or swelling and heat followed by abscess formation which may lead to a fistula and pain. The pictures on the right show different inflammatory results, excessive edema, radiographic lucency, and fistulous tracts. The picture on the left shows a drain placed for draining purulent exudate, and the picture on the right is a microscopic image of margination and pavementing of neutrophils. Emigration is the process by which white blood cells escape from blood vessels through gaps in endothelial cells. Chemotaxis is the directed movement of white blood cells toward the site of injury. Phagocytosis is the process by which white blood cells ingest and then digest 
foreign substances, which may include pathogenic organisms and tissue debris. White blood cells or leukocytes include neutrophils or polymorphonuclear leukocytes, monocytes which circulate in the blood, Lymphocytes and plasma cells are seen in chronic inflammation and the immune response. Eosinophils and mast cells are seen in both inflammation and the immune response. Neutrophils, or polymorphonuclear leukocytes, function in phagocytosis, which is cell eating. Their microscopic appearance is multi-lobed nucleus and granular cytoplasm that contains lysosomal enzymes. They constitute 60 to 70 percent of the white blood cell population, and they are derived from stem cells in the bone marrow. See figures 2-11 and 2-12 on page 40 of your textbook. Monocytes circulating in the blood become macrophages in tissue. Their function is phagocytosis, and they also play a role in the immune system. Their microscopic appearance is a single round nucleus and does not have granular cytoplasm. It constitutes 3 to 8 percent of the white blood cell population. They are derived from stem cells in bone marrow. See figure 2-12 on page 40 of your textbook. The biochemical mediators of inflammation cause many of the events in the inflammatory response. Basic mediators can recruit other mediators and immune mechanisms, which may be derived from blood, endothelial cells, white blood cells, and platelets, pathogenic organisms as they injure the tissue. There are three interrelated systems that are biochemical mediators of inflammation. These are the kinin system, the clotting mechanism, and the complement system. Other biochemical mediators of inflammation are released by the body. These are prostaglandins, which cause increased vascular dilation and permeability, tissue pain and redness, and changes in connective tissue, and lysosomal enzymes, which act as chemotactic factors and may cause damage to connective tissues and to the clot. Endotoxin, as well as lysosomal enzymes, can also be released by pathogenic microorganisms.